So I took my SAT last weekend, and finally this weekend I have some spare time on my hands. So I thought I would go ahead and take a couple hours on my day to mess around with some computer equipment. But then the idea came to mind. I wonder how well a Bitcoin miner will run on old hardware. Now I've looked at various forums and people, uh, th there's a general idea that old hardware is absolutely useless for Bitcoin mining. Now I do believe them, but I do want to test the concept myself. So that's exactly uh, what this video is going to be about today. Now I'm not exactly new to cryptocurrency. I've actually been messing around with Bitcoin for a couple months on my ASUS G75 gaming PC just to gain a general insight into the works of cryptocurrency. And from this endeavor I have gained a lot of knowledge about cryptocurrency, but I still don't know everything there is to know about cryptocurrency and I may make a couple mistakes in this video. So if you run across those mistakes, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section so I can post a annotation in the video to fix it. So let's go ahead and get down to business. The computer that I'm going to be using for this little experiment is a eMachine T1090. Um, and we're going to be mining on a Intel Celeron copper mine processor running at 900 megahertz. And our Bitcoin miner will be running on Windows XP. So I removed the side cover of the PC just to give you guys a general idea of what kind of hardware we're going to be using for this little experiment. As I said before, we're using a Intel Celeron copper mine processor running at 900 megahertz, which is right under the power supply there. Um, you can see the heat sink uh, right there. Let me get my flashlight. There it is. Right there, that is the heat sink for the CPU. Um, I have a 320 watt power supply on this. I believe this computer consumes around 150 watts, I want to say. I have a 20 gigabyte Seagate hard drive. Uh, there's a USB 2.0 card. I mean, that, that's not really going to affect the performance. Uh, there's a, I believe this is a Vision Tech 7064 megabyte PCI graphics card. Um, an additional fan for the graphics card. I have 300 and I want to say 20 something megabytes of PC100 SD RAM. And then we have our optical drive and floppy drive right here. So that pretty much sums up the hardware within the PC. I hastily threw together a setup. Um, I'm not actually sure. Hopefully this computer still works. I mean it should. I tested it a couple months ago and it powered up just fine. Um, so let's go ahead and power everything up. That sounds good so far. There we go. Computer and monitor still works. Both of these have been in storage for a couple months. So that's great. And I can't actually remember if this computer actually has Windows XP on it. Oh, there we go. It does have Windows XP on it, so that's great too. I don't have to install an OS. Alright, so I'll just go ahead and let it boot, and I will be back momentarily. Now about a thousand notifications popped up when I got to the desktop on this PC, but despite that fact, everything is working beautifully. I've actually went ahead and transferred my mining software onto the hard drive of this computer and we can go ahead and get started mining using this uh, Intel Celeron copper mine CPU. And to satisfy my earlier speculation, this computer does have 384 megabytes of RAM installed in it, not 320 something megabytes like I said earlier. And for this experiment, I am going to be using GUI Miner, which has a graphical user interface, so it makes mining uh, a whole lot easier for noobs like me. So there's two main things I'm really interested in recording during this experiment. The first one is how long it takes to accept one share while using a Intel Celeron copper mine processor. And the second thing I really want to see is the average hash rate of the processor itself. So I have everything set up and I have my timer here and right as I start mining I'm going to go ahead and record the time it takes to accept one share. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to record the whole time just because I don't have enough memory left in my camera. 
Um, but I will record for a couple minutes so you guys can get a general idea of the hash rate this CPU is actually getting. So I've started. It's connecting now. And I am starting the timer right as we speak. And as you can see, the CPU usage just shot up to 100%. So just a quick little update, it's been about one hour since we started mining for bitcoins and I still haven't accepted any shares. And by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but I am mining uh, with the dip, deep bit mining pool. So it's been approximately one hour, no shares accepted. I will update in the next hour. So I am currently an hour and nine minutes into mining bitcoins. I still have not accepted the share, but at this time I have to leave to go do something else. And unfortunately, that means I cannot peri periodically check up on the miner. So I'm just going to leave this camera lo rolling uh, while I'm gone. I actually replaced the 4GB SD card with a 32GB SD card that I was I uh, took out my phone because I was desperate um, because I have no other memory source to use. So I just took the 32GB SD card out of my phone and I'm using that to record this. Unfortunately, I did have to lower the resolution though um, to conserve memory. So I stopped to make a fallback point just in case my camera runs out of batteries uh, within the next hour or so because so far this computer has been mining for approximately three hours and I still have not been able to accept one share um, and it's getting kind of annoying so I'm going to go ahead and restart and see how much longer it takes before he can at least accept one share. So another hour has gone by, we are currently at the 4 hour mark, and this is getting absolutely crazy. It's currently 8.30, I think I started, what, around, I want to say 4? I mean, so this is getting absolutely ridiculous. Just to get one share, it's going to take over 4 hours. At this point, I really do feel like giving up, but I'm not going to because I've already put 4 hours into the project itself. So, I'm just going to leave the camera here and hope that I get a share soon.
Hey, look, I finally got one share. Five hours later. Look at that. It's been five. It took five hours to get one share. And I believe one share on the deep bit pool is approximately like 0 0.000001 bitcoins, which is around a hundredth of a cent. Um, so yeah, this just demonstrates how pointless it is to mine bitcoins on old hardware. And it also demonstrates un how unprofitable it is as well. I mean, I've used a, a lot of electricity. By the time you would have mined one bitcoin, which by the way on this hardware would probably take you a couple years, you would have used thousands of dollars in electricity alone. Um, so yeah, it's mining bitcoins on old hardware. It's just throwing money out the window. And I don't think this computer would last long enough to mine one Bitcoin. I mean, this program is just toasting the CPU the whole time the load is at 100%. And I know for a fact that that thing is getting hot. Unfortunately, I don't have any sort of temperature sensors or probe uh, probes to measure the temperature. I would really like to. That would be interesting. But unfortunately, I don't have the equipment on hand. Throughout the whole process, the computer had a pretty steady hash rate. It held steady at about 250 kilohashes, um, which is low, but it was able to hold that throughout the duration of the Bitcoin mining process. So I'm going to try to add some more content into the video by asking this last question. Is there any lasting hardware? damages done to the computer after running at full load for five hours. I mean, I'm sure after uh, doing this for a couple months, I mean, all the capacitors would be just shot because it would have, uh, it gets significantly hot in this case. Uh, even with all the extra circulation such as this fan and the new power supply, which moves a pretty large amount of air, but it still gets pretty hot in this case. Um, the capacitor bank that I'm actually worried about is the one that's right next to the CPU heatsink. And actually, right now, they all look good. Which, I mean, they should look good. It, it was only running that uh, Bitcoin miner for five hours. It, I mean, if, if the five hours destroy those capacitors, uh, they're, they're obviously faulty. Since I'm not willing to run this computer constantly for the next couple months with a Bitcoin miner, because that would just be a complete waste of energy, I am going to ask the audience, has anyone had any experience with long-term damage uh, to their actual machine from Bitcoin mining for a long period of time? If you have experienced damage to your PC from Bitcoin mining, please feel free to write about your experience in the comments section. I would really like to hear about it. Even though this video wasn't super content packed, I still thought it was interesting because we got to see uh, how wasteful running a Bitcoin miner on old hardware really is. And there's also some other things you could take away from this video. Um, so that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just post a comment in the comments section. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and please do not forget to like this video. I will see you guys next time.